Except this time when I was 20, well, I'm 23. Dollar store headphones. <laughs> nah. Inshallah. Anyway, so, well, I, uh, you know, I don't know. I was an individual who was very, very lost, living the American lifestyle, and, you know, getting myself into plenty of different types of trouble and so on and so forth. But, um, well, I, um, they sound like you're in a cave. How about now? I have one of those headphones that has the little uh, the microphone on the wire. So this is uh, this problem. Anyway, so uh, so anyways, uh, myself, um, you know, I was living uh, the Western lifestyle to the fullest. Uh, you know, getting myself involved in all the type of things that you know individuals, especially Muslims, they should stay far away from. And you know, I just kind of noticed in myself and my, my life that. Um, that I had a lot of emptiness in my heart. That no matter what I indulged in, no matter what uh, you know, of the dunya in terms of money and wealth and other things, whatever it was, cars and, and the like, that these things they didn't really uh, satisfy me. That you do things and you and you get involved in things that you have temporary happiness, temporary enjoyment, but in the end, in the end, you don't have. Stop in the California, right? California, right? Because. Um, and you do things that you have temporary enjoyment, but in the end, you realize uh, that subhanAllah, you still have the emptiness inside. Uh, you still have the emptiness inside. So, subhanAllah, um, with myself, with myself, you know, I just. Um, you see, the thing is, with my story, a lot of it I really I don't want to speak about. <laughs> That's another issue. Anyway, but, uh, you know, I actually befriended what happened before I embraced Islam about two years. I started to work in a, in a company. Uh, that had a lot of there, and I actually befriended some Muslims. Farid Abdullah, go to that. And then so I sat with him, mashallah, a few times. Actually, I live in Egypt as of now, so I really don't have much time. But mashallah, we sat with Sheikh Salam at the wheel. Sheikh Salam at the wheel. He was in Medesta. I was there a while ago. Mashallah, we benefited from him. But anyway, alhamdulillah, you know. I befriended some Muslims that they were actually very, very far from the religion of Islam. And they were actually living the exact same lifestyle I was living as a non-Muslim. They were living the exact same lifestyle I was living as a non-Muslim. Some of them were from Syria. Some of them were from uh, Palestine. Some of them were from Pakistan and the like. Um, you know, but uh, I didn't really learn much about Islam directly from them because you didn't find them doing any dawah. And this is what we see that when individuals uh, cannot take care of themselves and cannot take care of their own deen then how is it that they could possibly give the deen to the other people and this is the big issue that we have nowadays especially in the west we have an issue that many many of the muslim uh, they're not even taking care of themselves their own salah and their own uh, you know islam and staying away from haram and doing the wajib uh, so it's hard for them to call others to islam and this is one of the big issues that we have this is one of the big issues that we have in the in the Western world. Why the, the non-Muslims are not coming to Islam in droves, how they should be, because many of the Muslims, they're not maintaining themselves. And like I said, uh, you find individuals that they are Muslim, that they are actually uh, more so trying to follow the Western lifestyle than they are trying to follow the lifestyle of Islam. And this is the situation that I had. But even though, even though, um, even though I did benefit some from being around these Muslims, how so? Uh, they were very business minded. I seen them uh, a little bit different in some ways. I can't really pinpoint exactly how, but there was something a little bit different about them, even though they weren't individuals that were practicing Islam. Also, I benefited when I went to their houses, their homes, at times, and I would see their, their women folk, um, the wives and, and the daughters and the sisters, that they would, uh, they would have hijab on, uh, and I would see that they weren't outside running the streets, uh, especially the women I'm speaking about, the way that the non-Muslim women were at my time. Uh, so this is something that was very intriguing to me. And I knew even myself before as a, as a non-Muslim that eventually I wanted to settle down and to find a good wife, a good woman in my life. You know, before I had children so on and so forth, you know, nobody wants to have uh, that type of situation with a, with somebody who's going to, you know, end up divorcing and having, you know, uh, you know uh, how would they say, uh, you know, children that uh, baby mama, baby father drama. Anyways, so uh, this is something that was kind of interesting to me. And there was one individual 
who I later on found out he was a Shia. He was Alawi. I didn't know that at the time, though. He would uh, he would bring the Quran once in a while, in the middle of all the different fists he was doing. He would open the Quran, the second verse from it, and he would explain it to me a little bit. And mashallah, mashallah, it was something that uh, was very intriguing to me. So I became a little bit more and more interested in Islam that way. Uh, and how I ended up embracing Islam after maybe a year or two of that, maybe a year or two of this type of interaction with the, the non practicing Muslim me, is uh, one time I was at work, one time I was at work uh, with some of the Arab, this one Shia guy, this, uh, this guy from Syria, he was there, and somebody came from the Jama'at Tabliq. Somebody came from the Jama'at Tabliq, which is an organization, a group of individuals, Muslims, who go around uh, giving da'wah and so forth in the uh, uh, you know, throughout America and, and, and throughout the world. And um, I did benefit from that because when this individual he came into the room, when he came into the uh, he came into the shop where I worked at, he seen the Arab uh, he seen the Arab guy, the Muslim guy that was there, and he he went up to him to uh, to to give the to him to speak to him. Jamaat al No, I'm not Jamaat al yeah, yeah. Anyways. He went up to this uh, Arab guy to speak to him to try to give him da'wah to call him back to Islam. And when that individual, he seen the Jamaat al the, the brother from Jamaat al he, he was looking for an escape route. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was looking for an escape route. When he seen that person about to come up and talk to him, he was looking for any way out of this situation. Right? So he looked around to the left, to the right, and he seen me. And he said, you know what? <laughs> he said... That, when that individual came to him, he said, look, here's somebody who wants to learn about Islam, right, uh, right about to start speaking to him, and he said, look, look, this guy here, he wants to learn about Islam. So as, as the brother was looking for, the, the brother from Jamaat al he, he came to me, and he started to speak to me, and uh, he asked me, you know, if I was interested in learning about Islam, and uh, what did I know about Islam, and the like, and he invited me, actually, he invited me, they were having a, what they call Ishina, these people, they call it Ishina, which is a, like a group, a gathering where these individuals, the brothers, they get together and they, uh, this particular one was international, so they had brothers and sisters from all over the world, from Africa, from Indonesia, and from you know, Malaysia, all the different countries in the world, from the Muslim, uh, and they came and they gathered together there. So he told me to come, come with me for two days, he said, for three days. He said, in this two or three days, he said, you will, you will learn more about Islam than you would staying here, i.e. in the environment where you're at, at this work, uh, workplace and so on and so forth. He said you'll learn more about Islam. Sort of. <laughs> he said you'll learn more about Islam in the two days than you'll learn here in one year. And you know, I was at a, at a point in my life. You know, I was looking at this individual who's Pakistani. Right? He had a turban on. Right? He had Pakistani clothes on. To me, Subhanallah, he looked really a jeep. You know, <laughs> he looked like uh, you know. This is right before us. Right before. Where the stock come in? this is the city I was raised in. Right. He, uh, by looking at him, he looked very. It's something we should think about. Many of the non-Muslims, especially the guy was wearing a turban, right? He was wearing a turban and Pakistani clothes. And obviously, this is something that's very, very unfamiliar to the to the uh, non-Muslim people in the West. Uh, it's something very, very strange that individuals walk around dressed like that in in uh, in the West. So when I seen him, he was really looking kind of strange to me. But at the same time, I was at a point in my life where I was wanting to. Uh, I was searching, I was you know, soul searching. So when he invited me, I figured that subhanAllah, I don't have anything else to, uh, I don't have anything else to lose. Right? Why not go and, and see what they have to offer? What do I have to lose? And the, the mysterious thing about it is when I told these Arabs that I worked for, you know, that they, they were pushing this guy to come and speak to me to get the heat off themselves so they didn't have to listen to him. When I told my boss and the other guy, I said, listen, uh, he invited me, so he invited me to go with him to this ishtima, this gathering, for two days, and I'm going to take two days off and I'm going to go with him. And the same Arab, they said, no, 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 don't go with him. Don't go with him. No, we need you to stay, we need you to stay here and work. We don't have too many workers. We need you to work and we, need, you know, we can't have you leave for two days. And I was thinking that, you know, to myself, amazing. These people, they asked me, you know, this guy to speak to me, and now I'm inviting, I'm accepting his invitation, and because of the worldly things, they don't want me to go. So I, you know, told the guys, I, said, I told my boss, I said, listen, you guys had this guy come and talk to me. I said, now I'm going to go. 
I don't care. I'm going to go. You can fire me or whatever. I'm going to go. So anyways, I went with him. He picked me up on a Friday. He took me to this place. He was speaking to me a little bit uh, on the way to this place, which is in San Leandro, about an hour away from where I lived. And uh, when I got there, it was kind of amazing. And even though now, later on, uh, you know, in my Islam, I realize and I've learned that there are uh, many issues with the Jamaat of me, and they have some problems and some mistakes and so on and so forth. I, uh, I did benefit in that when I was seen uh, practicing Muslims, a uh, large community, a large group of practicing Muslims. There was about 5,000, <coughs> there's about 5,000 people in this Ishtima. And they were from all over the country, and they were all practicing Muslims. They had beards, and they, they, they were wearing clothes, and, and, you know, and the like. And they were, uh, you know, practicing, to, uh, practicing Islam in, in, in this, this Shema. So it was something amazing to me. I sat down the first night, and I, I watched them pray, <coughs> you know. And uh, the next morning, uh, the individual who took me, he told me, he said, somebody's going to come in the morning and wake you up. He said, when they, when they wake you up, he said, just get up and follow, follow the Muslims, follow them out to, you know, where are they going to go? Because if, if they wake you up and you don't wake up, they're going to think that something's wrong. I even more if they're going to think I'm Muslim and I don't want to pray Fajr, right? Now I understand this. So I woke up and I went to go use the, the, the bathroom that they had. They had like porta potties, a bunch of porta potties there, right? So when I went to go use this, one individual, he tried to give me uh, a thing of water, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, like this thing that the Muslims, you know, the, power, the flower pot or whatever people they used to use the bathroom, the water cups. And he was, you know, trying to make me take this, and I was like, I don't need it. Sorry. <laughs> and I was, <laughs> he kept trying to make me take this thing, so I was, I was like, no, I'm not going to take it. I don't need it. I don't need it. And one time I used the bathroom, right? Anyways, I came out after, and another Muslim came to me, you know, and he said, oh, Brother, may I speak to you for a second? And I was like, oh, what, what, what's the problem? What's the issue? And he said, um, he said, um, he said that, um, subhanAllah, uh, why don't you use the water? I said, I said, I'm not Muslim. And he understood automatically the reason that he left. Anyways, so um, ends up happening that the second day that I was at this Ishtima, this gathering, there was a person I was speaking to individually. He was a Samal from Somalia. And something amazing about this individual, that um, this individual, he... He had a new, he had light in his face. He had a lot of light in his face. Right? He did have a lot of light in his face. I noticed something about him that he had, like, true happiness, true happiness. I didn't know exactly what the issue was or whatever it was, but I seen that there was something uh, uh, different in his face. So when he used to speak to me, it really had an effect on me. So anyways, what it comes down to more or less, after a while, uh, we ended up, um, I ended up embracing Islam. I was... Uh, Abdullah Isa, stop with the name calling Yahi, Barakallah Fiqh, inshallah. Okay? <coughs> Anyways, I was invited by some brothers, they sat down, they spoke with me, and they, uh, uh, they invited me to. And honestly, yeah, Sheikh, what's up with these names? Allah. Please. You know, yes, the Jamaat they, they, they do have they do have issues, brothers and sisters, they do have. They do do innovation, they do, I don't know about great worshipping, but they do do some things. They do. And this is reality, so, <clears throat> you can't deny that at the same time. Anyways, so, uh, what happened was, I was invited, I said to Islam, you want the mic? Go ahead and take the mic. Well, that's, that's the case. I accepted Islam, I'll finish this up, I'm fasting, and it's almost time for me to break fast. So, I'm very, very uh, tired now. <coughs> Uh, had a great effect on me, and I embraced Islam by that, inshallah, by seeing the ikhlas, uh, seeing that the, the Islam in practice and, and the like, and mashallah, it was very, very beneficial for me at that point. Um, I wasn't somebody who really did a lot of uh, uh, investigation about Islam. I didn't really search and study a lot. I wasn't somebody who had a lot of knowledge. I actually um, learned after I embraced Islam. So this is another thing that we can benefit from, that many people uh, Everybody is different. Some individuals they they uh, they embrace Islam. They embrace Islam uh, based upon uh, a lot of studying and researching, and they take one year, two years, investigating, researching. Other people, in, you know, accept Islam uh, by the character of Muslims. 
<coughs> and this is something that many times we fail to realize. Like, in myself, I think I embrace this one. And seeing something in them that I didn't have in their face. <coughs> And I actually learned more about Islam after that. So we should really, really pay attention to our, our character, inshallah. And we should uh, make sure that we always give a good look about Islam because people there are watching us. And it has more effect sometimes than, uh, has more effect sometimes than uh, talking. How we deal with the people, how we give dawah to the people, how we share Islam with the people, sometimes has more effect than actually what we say. So sometimes what we find is some of the brothers and sisters that they have sound knowledge and they have very good knowledge about Islam but when they're speaking to the Muslims and when they're speaking to the non-Muslims alike they come off hard and harsh and wallahi this hard, hardness and this harshness uh, is a lot of anti dawah and if individuals they would have had that these people for example from the Jamaat of if they would have been calling me to Islam uh, with this type of harshness then it, it wouldn't, I wouldn't accept it obviously so this is something that we need to inshallah think about and ponder over that we should inshallah try to always portray the message of Islam uh, with sound knowledge at the same time in a good way inshallah huh? anyway inshallah I just want to share that a little bit with you there's really not much um, more to share inshallah I'm very very tired at the moment so inshallah go ahead and take the, 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 the